So slides for lab. So um, these are related to silage making. We went through it very quickly while we're standing outside. Here's a little bit more in-depth discussion about silage and making sure you understand the theory and what happens when silage is made. So we had this chart here. Let's take a little time and go through it. So on the x-axis down here, we've got um, the out. We've got the stages that'll go through with approximate timeline. And then we've got generic scale here for the levels of oxygen, uh, pH, and bacteria. So we're going to have the aerobic phase, and that's the consumption of oxygen. So you're going to have the oxygen curve starts up high, and then it uh, ends up zero down at the end of the aerobic phase. So once we get rid of the oxygen, we no longer are in the aerobic phase. We can move on to the anaerobic phase. So we have the anaerobic phase here shown as the lag phase and the fermentation phase. During that time, we have the growth of anaerobic bacteria. So they're growing and getting more and more numerous. As they grow, they're going to um, generate lactic acid. As that lactic acid is generated, we're going to see the pH curve drop going through. And as the pH, the lactic acid gets to a certain level, you're going to start to kill the bacteria and fermentation ends. We've got hopefully a stable pH somewhere around 4. And we go into a stable period where quote unquote nothing happens. So we'll go through each of these stages as we go through these slides. So we have the aerobic phase. You have the plant cells and the aerobic bacteria, the fungi, the mold, are going to consume starch and sugars. They're going to take that carbohydrate and turn it into CO2, water, and heat. This destruction of carbohydrate, which is not good, we want that carbohydrate to make lactic acid to be available to our cows if these plant cells, the aerobic bacteria, use up that carbohydrate. It's not uh, going to be useful later on. So this carbohydrate destru destruction continues till all the oxygen is gone. Um, in our plants, we don't have enough, we haven't dried it down enough to completely kill everything. So it's going to continue till the um, oxygen is gone. So this goes back to our stages that we talked about in lab. Fill fast, pack tight, cover completely and quickly. At lag or transition phase, the start of the anaerobic phase, the oxygen is depleted, anaerobic bacteria begin to take over. And now, instead of the carbohydrates being burned to CO2 and water, they are being converted to acids. And this is what we want. We want to maximize that transfer of carbohydrates into lactic acid. So anaerobic or fermentation, those are kind of uh, synonyms. So when we grow anaerobic bacteria, we take the WCS, water-soluble carbohydrate, and we might generate acetate or lactic ethanol or CO2. We want to create a fermentation that favors the lactate production. Lactate uh, generates acid 10 times faster than acetate. Uh, alcohol and carbohydrate or carbon dioxide really don't generate acid. So lactate is what we need to drop to get to that pH of about 4. The best way to do that is using homofermentative bacteria. That means they only produce one product when they ferment. They take the glucose, the water-soluble carbohydrate, the carbohydrates that are available 
in the homofermentative bacteria, they're going to turn it into two lactates. So you've got glucose, six carbon sugar, we divide that in half, and we generate two lactates. This is our goal. Our heterofermentative bacteria have a variety of products. And as we've alluded to already, lactic acid is the preferred product. All these others are using carbohydrates in a way that do not help preserve the silage. Once we get through the anaerobic phase, we come to the stable phase. So in a stable phase, not much is happening. Um, certainly acid is seeping into the corn kernels, making them more available, but that low pH stops the uh, bacterial growth, stops aerobic deterioration, stops the molds and yeasts. As long as we keep the oxygen out, we should be able to maintain that stable phase indefinitely. Like pickles on a jar, on a shelf, until you open it up and you reintroduce the oxygen, those pickles should stay preserved, pres uh, preserved more or less indefinitely. So certainly two years of a properly covered silo, um, that material is certainly good for at least two years. Um, uh, beyond that, many people don't carry that around um, or let things stay that long. Once we get to feed out, we are reintroducing or opening that silo up, reintroducing it to oxygen. The aerobic um, bacteria, fungi, molds will start to break down that feed. They're going to consume the lactic acid. The pH is going to go up and the material can start to rot. So it's a race between the bacteria destroying the lactic acid and the other acids and um, how fast we can get it fed out. So in the winter time, we're looking at two, three inches off a face of a silo, to stay ahead of that aerobic de deterioration. Um, in the summertime, we're looking at six inches we're taking off, to those, off of those faces um, to make sure that um, we stay ahead of that aerobic deterioration. So we're looking at our stages. We want to minimize the aerobic phase, maximize the anaerobic phase, maximize the stable phase, minimize the feed out phase. So here's a little bit more of what's going on in a simple chart. We have the ensiling process what microorganisms are active in each of the phases, what things are happening chemically in those phases, what the pH is, what the temperature might be. So if we're burning things to CO2 and water, we're going to generate heat. That heat is going to elevate the temperature of the material. Um, once we stop doing that anaerobic, that respiration, We'll start to lose heat. There will be a certain amount of heat uh, associated with fermentation, but not as much as we would um, during that aerobic phase. If you're feeling fresh silage, um, not well packed, you can stick your hand in there. Sometimes it'll burn your hand. It's so hot. But we got to get that oxygen out as quickly as we can. So if we start out neutral near seven for the plant material, We've got to get it down to four for a pH, and that's about lactic acid production, lactic acid bacteria getting that done. So you're seeing here the aerobic phase, anaerobic phase in two steps, stable phase, feed out phase. The lag phase is part of the initial anaerobic phase. If we look at things by activity, the silage fermentation process. So what happens in the field? You got cellular respiration, you got heat uh, activity, you got yeast and molds working. As we bring it to the silo, we're filling and packing. We should end that respiration process as we get rid of the oxygen. 
we should destroy the enzymes. We may, if we let that filling and packing phase go too long, we may heat things up and get heat damage. We're going to have lactic acid, probably doing bacteria doing a better job than our, our acetic acid doing better than our um, lactic acid bacteria. Molds are still doing their thing as long as oxygen is present. We got fermentation that's going to shut down the plant activities. We hope we're going to generate lactic acid and drop our pH to about four. So once we get through this area, we want it to be less than nine days. We hope that we can get our fermentation done in three weeks and then we move into the stable phase where we're at pH four. As we start to feed out, we may get heating of the face that causes, as we add that oxygen back in. We may get heating of the face um, and heat damage there. With the oxygen present, our yeast and molds can kick in again. So this is from, again, from the silage and hay preservation book. List of practices, the reason we do them, and if we do them, what are the benefits that we get? So we talk about um, harvest right. That's uh, maturity and length of cut. We want to fill the silo quickly. We want to uh, uh, pack tightly. Um, and we want to um, cover quickly, get the oxygen out as quickly as we can. So all of those procedures, if you do them right, will minimize the exposure to oxygen, minimize the aerobic phase. We want to get into our uh, fermentation phase as quickly as we can. They're saying at least two weeks here to get the job done. Um, three weeks is pretty comfortable when you think about it. So we wanna make sure we harvest everything correctly, um, get things where they need to be. Here's another list about the silage practices. So you gotta get your silo ready. You wanna make sure it's sealed. All your sides have no leaks for air in them or are covered with plastic. You want to make sure that you're at the proper moisture. You want to harvest at the proper stage. You want to make sure that you cut the right theoretical length so we can get a good pack. We want to fill rapidly, distribute evenly. If we've got a, a upright silo, we have to make sure that distributor is working the way it's supposed to. And then we are going to pack hopefully um, adequately and then we're going to cover as quickly as we can. So that's kind of a generic list of uh, practices and what we're shooting for, what we're looking for. You've got this list here again from the hay, silage and hay preservation book. You've got um, all the practices that are associated with the different structures. So you got tower silo, um, bunker silo, long bag, round bale. Um, the three silage processes there are largely the same, um, except tower silo is going to be self-packing. Um, uh, bunker silo, you're going to compress with a tractor. Long bag, you're going to compress with a filling apparatus that packs the material as it puts it in. And hopefully you get a good pack going through. Make sure we exclude the air. Um, how we're going to feel things, fix things as we go through. So silage making a complex anaerobic fermentation process. We can control some things. Um, other than that, uh, to a point and what we do from a management standpoint, what we do determines what's good or bad. So what are we So what are we in control of? We're in control of choosing that harvest date, making sure our moistures are correct, may getting things into the silo quickly, getting them packed completely, covered quickly. We're in charge of all those things. The better we do those things, the better silage that we have. So again, water-soluble carbohydrates are our fuel. We have these carbohydrates there. Um, 
We want to turn them into acid. We don't want to burn them off in respiration, CO2 and water. So the higher our sugar, the better the fermentation, the more lactic acid, the better the pH drops. If we burn all that water-soluble carbohydrate because we took too long to get rid of the oxygen, we didn't fill fast, we didn't pack tight, we didn't cover completely, um, we're going to run into trouble. So corn, as a general rule, contains more sugars than our uh, materials that we use for haylage. Here's another way of representing the optimum uh, corn silage or uh, silage contents. We have this middle range here. Upright, we're going to cheat a little bit drier. Horizontal silo, bunker silo, we're going to cheat a little bit wetter. So this is the optimum range for silage. Um, if we get um, too wet, we get affluent flow, so that moistures from 30 or 70, 80, 90 percent, no matter how low the pile is, we're probably it's going to compress over its own weight, and you're going to get affluent, you're going to get leakage from that silo. As we move to the left, um, dry matter is between 60 and 50 percent. They are generally too dry to ferment properly. So in that dryness, we're also going to get heating up, that heat damage. Also, it's dry, it doesn't pack real well. Um, we're going to get heat damage there, and that's going to be an issue. We get into this no man's land of 20 to 40 percent uh, moisture we're going to get a bad fermentation. We can't really preserve in this 20 to 50 range of moisture. If we're below 20% moisture, we've effectively gotten rid of most of the water. Those uh, were down in the haymaking range. So no man's land from 20 to 50. We want to be from 50 to 70% moisture for optimum silage. So we've seen this before. I want to make a clarification, and we'll do that with the next slide. So here we did recreated the same slide only with colors. So you can see that this oxygen goes down, but the bacteria are coming up. Those are two different lines. In the previous slide, they may have looked like they were together, um, but they're not. One's not a continuation of the other. And then you've got the pH level falling down. So these, with the colors, you can see where the curves are. So, and we're also listing down here the, at the bottom of the chart, aerobic phase, lag phase, fermentation phase. You can put the fermentation and lag together in the anaerobic phase and stable phase. So our summary, um, what we're looking for here, we want for our silage, oxygen, air is the enemy. We want to get rid of that as quickly as we can to stop the respiration of carbohydrates and move to the fermentation of carbohydrates. The more we save in the aerobic phase, the more we have to generate acid in the remaining phase. And then we went on to make silage. Uh, you took, we did, just did corn this year. Um, you did a good sample, which you took home with you. And we did the unpack, the whole too wet, too dry. And we'll open those um, after the feed ID exam to see what they are like.